Sith Lord is not to be trifled with. And I will not be there to protect you, my old Padawan. You need not worry, Master. Obi-Wan fills that role now. He acquits himself quite well. <laughs> sense of life through Tales of the Jedi episode 4, The Sith Lord. I very much enjoyed it. This is actually, this was my favorite of the whole miniseries. I just loved it. I loved it so much. A lot of things just hit me right in the feel-good hole. It follows Count Dooku as he is now at this point in league in cahoots with Sidious. He erases Kamino from the archive charts and runs into his old Padawan Qui-Gon, who had just encountered Darth Maul. The Jedi don't believe he was actually a Darth. They don't believe that the Sith could have returned. Then Qui-Gon goes back to continue the events of the Phantom Menace. It goes to where Qui-Gon is killed and Dooku is shattered by that. And that's basically really the final nail in the camel, basically the final straw that broke the coffin's back. And he's like, I am so done now. So he goes to meet Sidious at their favorite hiding place. Yaddle follows him, and then they have a bit of a moral quandary. Dooku ends up fighting Yaddle to the death. Dooku is now pretty legitimately Sidious's new apprentice, as that was his way of proving his loyalty to Sidious, so. Yeah, again, I liked fleshing out the characters more. For instance, found out that Qui-Gon was born on Coruscant, which is super cool, and, it, and it's like maybe my favorite scene in the, the whole episode is after Qui-Gon gets killed by Darth Maul, because this episode is happening in tandem with the Phantom Menace, just from different viewpoints, which I also thought was very cool. I used to bring Qui-Gon here as a boy. He was fascinated with this tree. Having been born here on Coruscant, a planet of steel and stone, he knew nothing like it. That's kind of what really finally, you know, pushes Count Dooku over the edge. He was close with Qui-Gon, so when he felt like the Jedi were being very dismissive of Qui-Gon's claims of Sith being out in a boat, out in a boat, Dooku just was not having it. Did not appreciate that, because he probably also felt dismissed a lot by the Jedi. It cuts. He understands the feels. And you believe it was a Sith Lord? Yes. I gather the Council was not eager to validate that conclusion. No, they were not, Master. I've been warning them about the coming darkness for years, never to be taken seriously. When he's talking to Yaddle about the, the tree, the Jedi tree that they got, I, I like that. It's just, it was just really nice to kind of tie the bond together between Dooku and Qui-Gon and to kind of drop in a couple bits of Qui-Gon background. Qui-Gon's my favorite character, so I, I enjoyed learning more about Qui-Gon. So it was cool to see that they have the part where Qui-Gon is about to go back to Naboo for the last act of The Phantom Menace, and he has a nice interaction with Dooku. I really liked where they kind of, again, reference Attack of the Clones, where Dooku talks about how highly Qui-Gon would talk about Obi-Wan. You're always singing his praises. <laughs> Qui-Gon always spoke very highly of you. I wish he were still alive. I could use his help right now. Which again, was kind of just like a, an added nice touch, an added texture. It wasn't super crucial dialogue for the movie, but I liked that they were able to take that and kind of expand on it. And I liked seeing Yaddle and Dooku reminisce about how quickly their apprentices grow up. Master Dooku, are you all right? They grow up so fast, our students. Yes, it is the way of things. Indeed. Helping someone grow and passing on what you know, but then also seeing them become their own person and changing and, and maybe doing things differently from you. Just the natural order of things, I think they even say. Seeing Dooku talk about Qui-Gon to Sidious was interesting, and then Sidious retorting back that well, we both lost an apprentice. It was almost kind of like a weird humanizing moment for Sidious. Not, I guess, really. It's still kind of from like a selfish kind of manipulative tactic. Uh, way of phrasing it, but it was interesting just to kind of see, again, 
was it? This episode for me, it's hard, it's hard to explain fully, but it just felt so Star Wars to me. And I know everyone has a different way of, this is where words fail, I think, a lot of times, because especially when it comes to things regarding feelings towards childhood or feelings of things that make people happy and angry. When it's dealing with emotions, it's hard to articulate sometimes when it comes to this, but, and everyone has a different meaning when they say it feels like Star Wars or it doesn't feel like Star Wars. But for me, this feels like Star Wars. kind of gave me the feeling that I would get from my favorite Star Wars content. It gave me that feeling. I think that's that's why I felt like Star Wars. It's staying true to the old while still telling a new story or expanding on the already existing story. And I think maybe that's my definition of what feels like Star Wars, you know? The conflict with Dooku was, was interesting. Going back now uh, at the, the clips of Dooku and Attack the Clones, I'm actually seeing now more conflict in him than I'd ever really noticed before. How remorseful he does seem and regretful at times when it comes to the things he's doing in the movie. What's cool about Tales of the Jedi that I like, instead of undermining pre-existing lore and content, it is truly expanding it and also making me understand pre-existing stuff more. Like now I look back at Attack the Clones and I know notice in all the ways that Count Dooku was more of just wanting to do the right thing and he's regretful of maybe some of the decisions he's had to make and he's regretful of some of the decisions he's had to make and you know still kind of feels that somewhat of a connection towards a lot of the Jedi that he used to serve beside. So this show is making me see stuff that wasn't Attack the Clones but I just never noticed before. Oh yes, I can always use more Dooku fighting with some agile little green Yoda folk. Also gave me Attack the Clones vibes, so it was cool to see uh, Yaddle be uh, just as agile. It was a good fight. Very satisfying. The whole show, everything was very satisfying. Ian McDiarmid is the GOAT. This episode explaining why Yaddle wasn't seen at the end of Phantom Menace, which is also something that I never realized. It made me see more of Phantom Menace as well that I didn't, I didn't catch it before. I've seen that movie a million times. Never really thought that Yaddle wasn't there uh, at the end ceremony. They're like, oh, well, let's let's have some fun with why she wasn't there. It shows like the people who were working on that know those movies, for instance, so well that they can notice things that they can then play around with to create stories within the stories and kind of make everything this one complete thing and get to see all the different perspectives and where everyone was at and what everything was going on at the same time. and. That's good. Yaddle doing uh, Obi-Wan's battle stance was also very cool. I don't know. That's something that I'm sure probably it makes sense lore-wise. Maybe she uses the same lightsaber style like Sorsu, or I don't know. It just seemed cool either way. Yeah, I liked it. The way it ended, I like that they, you know, she's she's powerful. She was able to at first stop the door from crunching her, but in the end, she lost it. It drains you, you know, when you gotta hold up a big crunch door. The kind of door that'll just mash it a bit. It takes energy to stop a door from doing that to you. So I like that at the end, she's just plopped. Episode four of Tales of the Jedi is in my opinion, the most Star Warsy thing I've seen since probably some of the lost missions of the Clone Wars for me. It rang true, that bell, that knell, you know? Hitting that knell, making that knell sound of the bell. Overall, it was just, mm. Mm. It's just pleasing. But that was some stuff that I thought of the fourth episode of Tales of the Jedi. What do you guys think of that episode? Let me know. Get your thoughts in the comments below. We'll have a discussion. Till next time, it's real. You've gone too far. I don't know what you mean. Why gone, Jin? You allowed Maul to kill him. You lost an apprentice and so did I. Yeah. <laughs>